Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today uh, for this talk about how to find your story and to get published. Um, so I'm Jen and I'm the community manager for opensource.com. I have been the managing editor and many other roles uh, over the past eight years as well. So I have a lot of experience with uh, getting writers to um, understand that their, their story is important um, that they have something to share and then sort of walking them through the steps for how to share it. Uh, some people come to us as writers uh, who have been uh, written and published uh, many times over the years. And some people come to us as first time writers, um, which is fantastic. We encourage people to share as much as they would like to. So this is really about that. Um, so um, you know, like I said, this talk is for everyone. Um, it's not just for writers, it's not just for speakers, and it's not just for people who are already publicly visible in the communities and in uh, even at, at their company. So um, we really all have something to share. And if you're interested in learning a little bit about that, please um, check out this talk and you're here. So thank you. Um, so we're going to talk about how to find your story, how to share your expertise, and then some bonus material on how uh, getting published raises your profile and connects you with um, a larger community. So the first step is finding your story. Um, you got to do your homework. So that's where we're going to start. Your homework is asking yourself some vital questions to figure out what you want to write about. Cause that's the first question is what am I gonna write about? Um, and I find a lot of people are either at a place where their mind is empty. What could I possibly share? or their mind is full. And there are so many different things that they could write about that they're not sure where to start. So I created a worksheet to help you figure out what you wanna write about. And hopefully this worksheet is gonna help you come up with many different topics, not just one, but many different things that you could potentially write about. So um, I'm gonna ask you to first, when you uh, use this worksheet to come at it with an open mind. Um, you might not, you might think you don't want to write about anything that you do at your day job. You might say, I'm not really passionate about any one thing. Or you might say, I'm not really sure what communities I want to be a part of. What is a community? Um, so come at it with an open mind. Um, you know, answer the questions to the best of your ability and see what shakes out of that. Um, try to not come in at it with a rigid, this is what I'm going to write about. How do I fill out this worksheet to get me to that end? Um, come at it with an open mind and just see where it takes you. So you can download this worksheet from my GitHub repo where I'm going to have um, all of this information, um, the slides from this talk, this worksheet, um, some tips for promoting your um your article once you have it published, um, as well as some other things. So you can find that at the end of this slide, there'll be a link for that. And if this is this is not clickable to you, but that is linked there. All right, so let's start with the first one. What do you do for your job? So one thing we love to tell people in general about answering these questions is, what might someone search for on the internet if they want to learn about one of the skills or the technologies that you use at your job or that you're pat or that you do to you know do your passion projects on the weekend um, what would they type in the internet so that might help you get started could you write an article that answers that question um, and then in terms of your job, what problems have you struggled with the most that someone else might be struggling with that you could help them learn about? Um, also, you could ask yourself what question or what questions did I have? What problems did I have? What did I struggle with um, during the first few weeks, months or years even on the job? All right, so let's address the passionate question. Um, so, you know, when you think about this, what hobbies do you do on the weekend? 
um, or during the week or in the evenings or whenever is the right time for you. What are you passionate about? Um, I find writing about what you do for your job or what you're passionate about are easy access points because you know these topics well. Some people like to do a bunch of research and then write about it after they've learned about the thing. And that's a great way to go too. But I'm talking about easier access points because this presentation is about how to get started writing. So um, another thing I'll add here is that articles don't have to be a thousand words. They don't have to be, and they really shouldn't be dissertations. You know, we're talking about posts on the internet where people can learn something new or learn how to solve a problem. So again, let go of all of the um, restrictions that you might've put around what it takes to write and relax a little bit, let go a little bit, open up and explore and you know, see what might come out of that. Articles can be 500 words. Um, if they are short, you want to make sure that they really are covering that topic and you're not, um, you know, getting into other areas, you know, straight into the point. But again, don't box yourself in, open up. Um, and then in terms of communities, this is really going to help you address who your audience is. So let's say that you're part of a community. You can ask yourself, what are the pain points in that community? What problems are do I see in those communities coming up with the technologies those people are working with or even just with um, you know, kind of the interconnections between the people. Are there any problems there that you could address? And those could be posts that you could write to help solve those problems. And these are really from mundane issues to complex ones. Um, you can write easy articles that address easy questions, or you could write more complex ones. It might be easier to start with the uh, more simple things. And a lot of times we have people um, come to us and say, I could write about this, but A, it's been written about a hundred times already or B I really don't have anything new to bring to it and what we often find is that that is not true you have something unique and special to bring to any problem that already exists because it's coming from your perspective so I encourage you to um, write about your experiences share as much about actual life events that you can without you know giving away too much information um, for many reasons that might be part of the issue but share about things that you've already had experience with um, that make your approach to the problem unique all right so do your homework and then step away and come back to that a few hours a few days later and ask yourself what jumps off the page what really tugs at me out of all of these ideas that I might have gotten from doing this worksheet and what really is, you know, pulling at me and interesting to me. Um, if you aren't sure, still not sure from uh, doing the work worksheet, I would suggest that you show the worksheet to a trusted friend or a colleague and say, what jumps out to you from this worksheet? Um, what do you think that I'm good at? People are really helpful for being that mirror and showing you uh, more about yourself. And that, I feel like that's another hard thing about writing is you're trying to figure out what to write about and it's hard to sort of analyze your life or analyze yourself so that you can figure out how to get what's inside out. So it's nice to get uh, feedback from other people in terms of what topics would be good for you to write about. Um, and then also as you're further down the line and you've already written and you're, you put it on a page, um, it's nice to do that writing in a shareable document. We often use uh, Google Docs which might not be everyone's favorite, but they are really great for being a shareable document where other people can, you can share the link, other people can sign in, they can edit, they can suggest edits, you don't, you can accept or reject the edits, or they can leave comments. And it's really helpful for getting that feedback and uh, moving your writing down the line. So the next thing you're going to do is label your topics. So you're going to get, hopefully you're going to get um, a, a several ideas out of the worksheet. And um, then I like to um, 
label them from easy to write where you know this topic backwards and forwards and you could just knock it out in a day. Um, quick to write, explaining it might be a fast and quick process or hard to write. You might really need to think through, okay, what does it take to, uh, to write about this? Um, I'm gonna take a few days where I like document what it takes and then I'm gonna actually have to get it out on paper. Um, and then this could also be very time consuming in terms of you might need to do additional research. It might really take some time to uh, get it all together. Um, and so there's no right or wrong answer. Um, it's nice to have easy ones and hard ones. Start with the easy ones if you're getting started writing for the first time or it's been a while since you've written. And then you can go back to your hard ones later once you feel good and comfortable and you've written and gotten a few things published. All right, so we're gonna move on to sharing your expertise. So you figured out what you wanna write about and you need to start writing. So I would say, first start with an outline and a lot of people skip this step because they feel like it's sort of annoying and in the way but if you are just trying to actually get some words down on the paper which can be hard writing can be hard for all of us for various reasons whether you're not in the mood you have chores you have other responsibilities that you need to do whether it's in your professional or your personal life or hey maybe there's a global pandemic happening and things are just turned upside down, um, writing can be hard. So, you know, you really just need to start getting some words down on the page. So I'd like to start with an outline and outlines, again, are just a few words on the page. They're just some bullet points guiding you uh, for writing the larger article. So do that outline and then share it with a trusted friend or colleague again, or you could share it with an editor if you kind of already know where you'd like to publish this article and then they can give you some feedback on that outline. All right, so you've sent that over, you're wait, awaiting some feedback. While you're waiting, check out an up-to-date style guide. And this is going to serve you as you start to write the larger full article draft. Um, I linked some of these guides in my GitHub repo. I have an API style cheat sheet because you don't need to read the whole API book, which is like, you know, this thick. Um, there's a cheat sheet that should be helpful for the main things that you would need um, some copy editing feedback on. Opensource.com has a style guide that we're happy to share. It's on our website. And then Red Hat has a style guide as well that's based on IBM style, style guide. And that's a little bit more lengthy. So you're gonna start writing your draft. <clears throat> First, uh, think through just a, the most simplest form, uh, the format of an article. So you have a headline, an introduction, a body, and then a conclusion. So for your headline, um, you're, you know, if you send it into a publication, they're probably gonna have some feedback on what they think the headline should be, but the headline can also guide how you and what you put in the article itself. So I like to think about um, what question does your article answer and make that the headline in the most simple and straightforward of ways. It's really fun to write cute headlines. It's really fun to include cute um, subheadlines, uh, H2s, you know, in the body of your article as well. And those have a place, but start with at the very least, just the most simple and straightforward way. It might seem kind of boring, but honestly, that is what helps people the most because they understand what they're getting out of it. For the introduction, you're going to want to present the problem and tell people what they're about to learn. Again, it might seem kind of boring, but you got to start with the basics so that people really understand what they're getting out of this. All right, so um, so the introduction or so the body of the article is where you're going to really start describing the details of your um, of your article, answering the question that the article um, is the question that you're um, answering and just be descriptive as possible. You know, this is where you can really get into detail and get into length. You can include images here um, where they're necessary. You should cite any resources and stats that you add. You can link to those articles, links link to the name of books. And um, 
I also like to at this time search, or you could even do this beforehand, search the internet for your topic or even your specific question that you're answering and see what other people have written about it. Um, other people will likely have written about it. And that's great. A lot of times we have people say, well, people have already written about that. I really don't want to write about it again. Cause what could I bring to it? Um, you, your specific perspective and experience is what you're bringing to it. And it is oftentimes, I would say always, but I don't like to say always going to be different. And so you're going to bring something to this that is different than what someone else has brought to it. Um, you might even have the same general answer that another person has given, but it's going to be your perspective. So that's another thing to add to the body of an article is share your specific experiences, specific feedback, um, share as much as you can about that, because that is really also what's interesting to people. It's like, what has this person been through? Um, and this can be very, a very technical article can still have uh, personal experiences. And um, even if it's not relating an event, it's like, this is, these are the exact problems I had. And these are, um, that's what I'm going to address. And that's what I'm going to answer. Hope that makes sense. I can answer more about that later. Um, and then in the conclusion, you know, just easy, easy, easy. Summarize what the reader has learned and give any additional resources um, and potentially where they can learn more and what the next steps might be. And that can also see the idea for additional articles on the topic for you. Okay, so that's writing the draft. So let's say that you've gotten past that huge hurdle. Hooray, congrats, good for you. And now you need to pitch it. Um, so you're gonna either pitch it to a publication or you can self-publish, which you don't need to pitch it to yourself, you already have. So you can self-publish on um, sites like Medium, Hacker Noon, uh, WordPress and other blogs, um, even something like GitHub Pages where you're, you know, you have a platform, you can go ahead and press the publish button. Um, that's great. There's definitely nothing wrong with that. Um, but two things that you're going to get out of pitching it to a publication. One is um, professional copy editing and publishing services. And the other is promotion. So I, I see that as a baked in audience. Opensource.com, for instance, uh, receives roughly two to three million unique visitors a month. And so that is our audience. Um, and, and you publish on our site and if you know those people find your article interesting, click on your headline, they read your article. So you, you know, there's a built-in huge larger audience with a publication. Um, and then, for instance, our editors uh, help with writing ideas. We do copy editing, which is grammar, spelling, format, all that good stuff. SEO. We upload it to our CMS, which is Drupal. We do the publishing, put it on our publishing calendar, and then we promote it on social media. So all of that is really about getting the word out there that you've written this great thing and hopefully getting a lot of folks to look at it. Um, because again, that's what you're trying to do, right? Is help other people. So I encourage you to pitch it to a publication. Now you're going to have some parameters around that. It's, again, it's not as easy as just hitting the self-publish button you're going to be talking to a person on the other end and you need to think about what that means. So tell them who you are, um, tell them your areas of expertise, uh, tell them what your article is about and what problem it solves for the reader. It's not very hard, but it is important to do. So then um, after you have hopefully gotten published, you're going to um, promote your article and share it. So, uh, you know, sharing and publishing, first of all, helps others. It helps them learn, it helps them feel connected, and it helps them grow and just become a better human at learning this new thing or learning how to do that this other thing better. And then getting published also helps you. It can help you get hired and promoted in your job. It can help you connect with um, the communities that you're already a part of or that you want to be a part of. And it can help you be a leader and a mentor in the space as well. So there's a lot of positive things that comes out of going through the process of figuring out how to talk 
slash write about a thing and then putting it out there. Um, so on opensource.com, we share tips for promoting your work on social media. Um, we encourage you to link to it on your digital portfolio and your resume, add it to your GitHub, GitLab repos, add it to your personal website, you know, add it to all the places that you can to um, help visibility um, and, and, of course, getting it out there for others to see. Um, so with that, um, about 20, you know, it took about 20 minutes to get through that, but there's a lot in there. Um, and I, you know, there's a, there's a lot that goes along with writing. Um, and like I said, writing can be hard and we totally get that. But when you're ready and you're up for it, there are some fairly simple but important steps to take to get started and write a great article, which can be done. Um, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned writer, whether you're a beginner at the technology or a seasoned practitioner. You know, we work at opensource.com with people of all different, at, in all different stages, um, at all different ages <laughs> from all over the world. And, um, you know, it's really humbling to work with people who just care about teaching others and um, sharing their expertise and sharing their life with people. Um, writing about it is just, you know, it, if you really just think of it as a way of getting the word out there um, or the sharing your story, sharing your expertise, getting it out there, it becomes, I think, a little bit more of a surmountable challenge um, because writing, again, it can be hard. So we understand that. Um, I understand that and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have or talk with you more about it later. You can email me at jenwike at redhat.com um, on Twitter at jenwike. And like I said, I've pub uh, published and put all of this in my GitHub re repo called Get Published at jenwike. So with that, I'll open it up. Hey, Jen, we, we had a question about your the worksheet um, and, okay. and probably a lot of your, um, you know, content that you shared here. Do you know where your slides going to be available or, or could you uh, share the link to uh, the worksheet within the, the chat? Yes. So let me. Let me start by. Um, Sharing the GitHub. And I'll share the worksheet as well. Loading, loading. Um, but yeah, everything's on my GitHub. And I'm going to, I'll share the link in the chat. That'll probably be the easiest thing to do. Um, and then you can download anything from there. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I'll just go ahead and share this as well. This is the GitHub page, github.com slash genwike slash get published. And I have the slides that I just went through, um, the worksheet, uh, some links to style guides, and then um, I have this other thing that I didn't talk about that I need to make sure to mention. Um, it slides on uh, that I labeled why write and it's a feedback from people from writers and from managers. So managers talking about why it's important to write, um, what they find valuable about that in their employees and their teammates. And uh, then feedback from people who have written um, that are in the open source technology space specifically and what it's meant to them and, you know, sort of some people talk about the obstacles that they've gotten past to, you know, get to a place where they feel good about writing. And then other people are sharing um, what it's meant to them just in various ways. So I, I find that one really great for inspiration. I mean, this is really such an important topic because I mean, there's so much, especially with open source. I mean, a lot of technical people, um, you know, they're a wealth of, of information, but getting it out of them and getting it, 
to the, the world, you know, and share it amongst the community. I mean, it's, this is, uh, this is key. So this is, this is yeah. a fantastic presentation. We see a Thank another. you. And the other thing with writing um, too, in terms that, you know, kind of relates to all things open this conference is if you're interested in becoming a speaker, um, getting started writing is such a great first step because it helps you again, it helps you think through what do I want to share? How do I share it? Um, you know, even if you write up an article that you don't want to share, you don't want to get published, it could help you turn that into a talk where maybe you feel better talking than you do writing, but you've at least, you know, gotten the, the thought process going. That's, yeah, that's really good. Um, it, it, a question here about the Contributors Club um, and the Correspondence Program. Um, there's a question if, if you could just share a little bit more about those. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so um, part of what we do on opensource.com beyond just offering editorial services is we do some community management around uh, the writers uh, who write for us more than once. So we love to bring in first time writers, but then we also encourage people to write, um, write again, you know, for their own, um, for their own uh passions and projects and, and areas of expertise. And then we, we nurture those people. So the Contributors Club is if you have written three or more articles in a 12 month cycle, um, we recognize you, identify you, I reach out, send you a huge thank you. And then we also send you a little bit of opensource.com swag in the mail um, as a way to say thank you for being part of our community and writing for us. And, you know, getting some hearing thank you goes a long way in so many uh, different regards. And if you know Todd uh, Lewis, the <laughs> organizer of this event, you'll know that to be true. Um, he loves to say thank you, but it really does go a long way. So that's a way that we say thank you to that group. And then we also have a group called The Correspondence, and they're people who write 10 or more articles in a 12 month cycle. Um, so they're really, you know, a deep part of our writer community. Um, they are really into sharing their expertise and their and their ideas. And so, um, you know, we, we have a lot of benefits with that program. Um, and there's a link on our website if you'd like to learn a little bit more about what those are. Fantastic. Um, oh, this is a really, really good question. If, if, if I write something now, but the technology um, you know, up changes to the point where it becomes obsolete. Is it expected for us to continuously update that article? That is such a cool question. Um, I don't know if I've ever been asked that directly or um, anytime in recent memory. <laughs> um, I would, I would say no. I mean, we might have some other editors on the chat right now that would say differently and feel free, but you know, no, um, because that's just the nature of tech. You know, that's the nature of being a writer in tech is that there's always the chance that things are, and it's a good chance, right, that things are going to change. Um, and that technology, it might not even, what you write about, not only might, might it change and will it change, but it could just be obsolete for other reasons in a year. Um, it just might drop off the face of you know, the user world. So we would never expect you to come back in and, and update that article. It's just, you know, it is what it is for the time being and um, it helps people for the time being and that's great. Um, another question, if, if I have an open source project and you want, to, you want to review it on your site, will you do that or do I have to write Great question. Great question. Um, we get this question a lot, which is like, it's, it's such a great question. So um, we, our staff are, um, do, do not review uh, projects and other open source tools and things like that and write about it. We are not journalists, reporters, writers on our own site. If, um, there are exceptions to that in terms of sometimes we'll write a poll or um, <clears throat> we'll contribute to an article um, in some other way, but um, 
we are not, you know, in the in the business of kind of reporting on technology and writing about it. We are an editorial team in terms of bringing in user um, uh, articles. So, like, if you are the user of the tech, um, we want to hear from you. So, our job is really to help you write for us. Um, I, I guess I I don't see any others, but I've I've got one. I know you mentioned Drupal. Is that kind of like the the industry standard for for publishing or editing now? Is that I, I've heard that a lot, but I I've I've never used it, so I was just curious. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. I mean. I don't know for sure, but I don't think most of the other publications are, I don't I mean, it's not that they're not using Drupal, but I think that everybody's using something different um, for the back end. Um, and there are so many publications out there that, you know, there's just a, a wide variety. Um, Drupal is pretty big though. I think it's pretty, it's pretty widely used. Um, Drupal 8 just came out um, and we're updating our site to that. So. I think, I mean, it's definitely heavily used. It's a, it's a big one. See any more, any more questions out there? I don't see any more in the Q and A. Check the chat. See a lot of friends in the chat. Thanks for coming. Um, we just hosted a um, correspondent summit. So we have 23 people in our correspondent program and that's the community nurture program I was talking about earlier. Um, and it was so wonderful to see everyone. Usually we meet in person during the All Things Open conference in Raleigh. We fly everybody to Raleigh. I'm located in Raleigh. And um, we talk about writing, we talk about ideas, we talk about, you know, pie in the sky, you know, fun ideas for the site, opensource.com, you know, how can we, serve our community? How can we share great articles? Um, how can we inspire each other? Because so much of so much of writing is being inspired because you have to overcome so many challenges to write. Um, you have to overcome your own self-doubt. You have to overcome time, <laughs> um, finding the time to do it. Um, and so, you know, really having that time is is so super special and, and important to do and so it was it was really great we we hosted these folks um virtually from around the world and um it really kind of it always is an inspirational time um and so if you're not part of that program which most people aren't there's only 23 people in there um i guess the point in sharing that really is that there's so much inspiration that the editorial team can share with anyone who reaches out to us and is interested in writing. Um, if you're on this call right now in this talk and you're like, well, I'm not going to write, but I know someone who might like to write, please share their information with us. Please share our information with them. Um, I'll type here um, in the chat what our um, sort of editorial email address is um, where you can reach all of us. Um, and one of our editors will get back to you and reach out to you um, and yeah, talk to you and hopefully inspire you 